Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV, and also welcome back to the Linux Crash Course series. In this particular episode, what I'm going to do is cover the man command. The man command is something that I probably should have gone over a long time ago, but then again, most of the episodes in the series can be watched in any order, so I guess it doesn't matter. Better late than ever. Anyway, the man command allows you to view manual pages for many of the commands that are available on the Linux terminal, so it's definitely a very important command to learn. And these manual pages contain a lot of information, things like command line arguments, usage examples, and so on. So I definitely can't wait to dive into this command because again, it's very important. But before we get started, I need to mention the sponsor for today's video, Linode. Linode is a cloud provider, but not just any cloud provider. They're a Linux focused cloud provider. On their platform, you can spin up your own Linux server in minutes and they have all the distributions out there that you might want to learn, which includes, but isn't limited to, Ubuntu, Debian, CentOS, Rocky Linux. There's actually quite a few distributions on their platform that you could choose between, which makes Linode an especially great fit for Learn Linux TV. Their platform is a great way to get started and get your own server. Now, if you don't already have an account on Linode's platform, you can set one up quite easily by simply using the URL that you see on the screen right now, which will do two things. One, it'll get you $60 in free credit towards your new account, and that credit is good for up to 60 days. But in addition to that, it also lets Linode know that you heard about them through this channel, which actually supports the channel, and I would really appreciate that. And their platform is really awesome, not just for spinning up test servers, although yeah, it's a great solution for that. You can set up your own website, a blog, a Minecraft server, a Nextcloud server, there's all kinds of things that you could use Linode's platform for. And on my end, it's actually the official cloud provider for Learn Linux TV because every web facing service for this channel is actually using Linode. Thanks so much to Linode for sponsoring today's episode, as well as the majority of the episodes in this entire series. I really appreciate it. Now, with all of that out of the way, let's dive into the man command. First of all, most Linux distributions come with the man command by default, so the commands that I'm going to show you as examples in this video should work for the majority of you. In some cases, the man command might not be available when it comes to your distro of choice, so if the man command doesn't work for you, there might be something unique about your distribution in particular, such as needing to install the man command and the man pages manually. It's not common, but it does happen. And the basic syntax for the man command is actually among the simplest when it comes to other commands that I've gone over in this series. We simply type the word man, and then we type a command that we want to view more information about, or a command that we want to view the man page for. And you know what? The ls command is a very common command, so let's just check the man page for that. So I typed man ls, and I'll press enter. Let's see what happens. And here we have the man page for the ls command. While you're viewing a man page, you could use the down arrow to scroll down if you'd like. The up arrow scrolls you back up. In addition to that, the page down and page up buttons are supported as well. So you can simply scroll through the information here for the command that you've requested to view the man page for. And actually, there's quite a bit of information here when it comes to man pages. They're often very long. This one in particular isn't the longest that I've seen or anything like that. But when you view a man page, you'll get all the information that you might want to know about that command. So for example, we have a lot of options here for the ls command. And I don't actually memorize all of the commands that I show you guys in these videos. Now I do memorize some commands, specifically the ones that I use every day, but I'm not actually going to memorize every single option of every command. That's just not something we humans are able to do. If you are able to memorize the entirety of all the man pages, then you must have secluded yourself from your friends, your family, and all of your hobbies because you just wouldn't have time for anything else if that was the case. But one of the best things about man pages is that anytime you want to know something about a command, you can just simply view the man page for that command and read about whatever it is you're trying to find out in that moment. You don't have to read the entire thing, but if there's a specific option that you're looking for, then you can scroll through the options here, for example, see if you can find it. 
For example, here we have the dash H option, which is something that I use quite often when it comes to LS. That gives us human readable output. And essentially what that means is that you're going to see the file sizes in terms of megabytes, gigabytes, and so on. And there's the long listing format shown there at the bottom of the terminal window on my screen. The dash L option, that's another one that I use quite often. When it comes to dash I, if you wanted to check inodes, something that I probably should go over in another video now that I think about it. But if you're curious about inode usage, then you could use the dash I option. Anyway, back to the man command. Here we have the man page for the ls command. You just saw me scroll through this particular man page. And whenever we're finished, we could press Q to quit out of the man page reviewing. And that takes us right back to the command line. Now, when it comes to man pages that I've viewed the most often, nothing even comes close to the man page for the rsync command. rsync is a fantastic tool that you could use to copy data from point A to point B. Maybe point A is a server and point B is a server. You want to copy data from one server to another, or maybe the destination is an external hard drive. You could use rsync to back up files as well. It's a great utility but it's also a utility that has a lot of options. And here's the man page for the rsync command. If I scroll down, you'll see that there's quite a bit of information here. It just keeps scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. You get the idea. And you could also see that there's actually quite a few options when it comes to rsync. And I'm still scrolling, by the way. And that's probably one of the reasons why I refer to this particular man page quite often, because rsync has a lot of options. You'd actually be surprised some of the cool things that it allows you to do. And like I mentioned earlier, I'm not going to memorize all of this here. There's just too much to memorize. But anytime I want to learn more about a command or look up a particular option, then the man pages are a fantastic way to do that. Now there's some other things about the man command and man pages in general that I definitely want to show you guys. And one of those things is mentioned right here on the screen right now. It says press H for help or Q to quit. So if I press H, for example, what it's going to do is show me how to navigate man pages. So for example, we can see keyboard shortcuts for going forward one line, back one line, one window, one window back, one window forward, and so on. So if you need a reminder when it comes to how to scroll man pages, you can see a list of shortcuts here in this menu. There's actually more when I scroll down. As you can see, there's a lot of information here. For example, there's a way to search for information. And that's very useful, so let's take a look at that real quick. And let's say, for example, I want to utilize archive mode, and I forgot how to do that. Archive mode in rsync allows you to make sure that everything is the same between point A and point B. So if you are copying data to a server, for example, then archive mode is going to attempt to retain the file permissions, modification dates, and things like that, the metadata, basically. You might actually want to retain that metadata, which is something that rsync isn't going to do normally, but archive mode will let you do that. I know this isn't an rsync tutorial video, but if you didn't already know that, well, consider that a bonus. But if I forgot how to use archive mode, actually I didn't, but I'm just going to pretend as if I did forget, we could press the forward slash, and that's going to give us the ability to type something here. So what I'll do is type archive, and I'll press enter. Now what's going to happen is when you search for information within a man page, it'll take you to the first occurrence of that term. Here it's referring to archive mode, but it's not actually telling me how to do it. So what I could do now is press N for next, and that's going to take me to the next occurrence. And actually, the next occurrence is the one that I'm looking for. So as you can see here, if I want to use archive mode with rsync, then I could add dash dash archive to the command line when I run that command, or more simply, dash a. It doesn't matter what you use between dash a or dash dash archive. Both of them do the exact same thing. They activate archive mode. And more specifically, we can actually see that archive mode consists of options R, L, P, T, G, O, and capital D. So when you use archive mode, you're actually using those options. You could think of archive mode as shorthand for R, L, P, T, G, O, capital D. Try saying that five times fast. And if you're curious which each of those options actually do, then you could look up each of those options. For example, I'll search for dash R. 
which is actually right there a few lines down from where I already was. I didn't even notice. You can see here that dash R is for recursive. It's going to copy the contents of directories. It's going to recurse into directories, which is actually something you're probably going to want most of the time when it comes to rsync. Now I'm not going to look up each of these options here. If you're curious, I'll leave that up to you. Consider that homework if that's something that you're curious about. Now another trick that I wanna show you guys is that you can actually press letter G on your keyboard and that'll take you right back to the very beginning of the man page. So as you can see here, I press G and I'm back to the beginning. If you want to go to the end of a man page, you can hold shift and press G and that'll take you to the end, just like you see here. So again, G to go to the beginning and capital G to go to the end. Now, if for some reason the lowercase g doesn't work to get you back to the beginning, you could also try pressing GG, so basically the letter G twice in a row, and that might do the trick. On my end, I could do that by just pressing G once, but I do remember in the past you actually had to press G twice, but it's letting me press it once, so I'll just give you guys the shortcut of letter G once takes you back to the beginning. Now, another thing that I wanna show you guys is that there's actually multiple sections within the man pages. Each of the sections actually goes over a very specific category of information. So actually, I'll just show you, and I think it's going to make a lot more sense, and then I'll explain it in more detail. As a random example, what I'm going to do is choose the passwd command. That's the command that you could use to change your password. You could also use that as root to change the password of another user. But just like all the other commands that we've looked at so far, it has a man page. Actually, it has a few. What we see in the upper right-hand corner, as well as the upper left-hand corner, is the number one. What does that mean? Well, actually, in this case, one represents section one. Section one is for executable programs or shell commands. And well, the passwd command is absolutely a shell command. So it has information in section one of the man pages. Now, if you don't tell the man command which section you want to see, then it's just going to give you section one by default. That's going to be the one that most of you are looking for anyway. So to give you an example of how each of the sections differ, what I'll do is bring up a different section of the passwd command. Now, if you're looking for a specific section, what you do is you actually type the section number right after the man command. In this case, let's say I'm interested in section number five. And the command that we're working with again, is the passwd command. So I'll press enter, and you can see that the information is completely different. We see the number five right next to passwd on the upper right-hand corner and the upper left-hand corner. And this section actually pertains to file formats and conversions. In this case, we have an entry for the passwd command in this section because it does have a file that meets that criteria. It has the Etsy password file or the Etsy passwd file because they've abbreviated it. That's another thing that I've gone over in a previous video. But this entire page right here is going to be specific to files that are associated with the command that you're looking up. So the takeaway here anyway is that you can view different sections of man pages and different commands will be found in different sections. Most of them will be found in section one, but some of them will even have information in multiple sections and the passwd command is an example of that. So right here is a list of the individual sections within the man pages. We have sections one through nine. We're not going to go over each of these sections in this video. For our purposes in this series, the default section we see whenever we use the man command will be just fine for us. But I wanted to make sure that I gave you this information in case you'd like to view a different section, as well as for something to refer back to later. As you grow and learn new skills, you might actually find yourself looking at other sections of man pages more often, but at least at the very beginning, you are probably just going to focus on section one. Also keep in mind that not all commands will exist in each of these sections. In fact, some commands might only exist in one section. For example, let's see what happens if I try to view section three in regards to the ls command. There's no entry for it. And that's something that you might run into because if there's no information to display at all, then it's just going to tell you that there's no information to display, which is exactly what happened right here. Now there's one more example I'd like to show you guys before I close out this video. And this one has to do with something that's known as built-in commands. Built-in commands will not have their own man page. For example, 
We know that the cd command exists. We use that to change directory all the time. It's a very common command. But when I press enter, watch what happens. Basically nothing. There's actually no man page for the cd command. Actually, that's not exactly true. If I was to type man and then built-ins, just like that, and then press enter, what this is going to do is give me information for built-in commands. So the cd command is in fact a built-in command. We actually see it mentioned right there under the synopsis. It's the second line down. We see it listed right there. So all of these commands right here are built-in commands. They're built into the shell. In this case, bash. These commands are built in to bash. So it's a good idea to understand which commands are built in. I mean, you don't have to memorize this or anything like that. But if you run into a situation where you want to view the man page for a command, and for whatever reason it doesn't come up, but you know for sure it's a real command, then you might want to check the built-ins page right here and see if the command that you're trying to view information for is listed within the commands shown right here. Again, here we have commands that are known as built-ins. They have their own man page. Anyway, I just wanted to mention this because newcomers will often run into a situation where they go to view a man page for a command that they're sure exists, a command that they actually use, just to find out that the command doesn't actually have a man page. Well, built-in commands have their own man page, and you could access that by checking the built-ins page within man itself. So there you go. In today's video, we took a look at the man command, which as you can see is a simple but effective command because it's full of all kinds of information regarding commands that you can enter on the Linux terminal. Now, did this video help you out? If it did, then please consider clicking that like button to let YouTube know that you found value with this content. What that might do is spread Linux to more people and that would be awesome. Either way, thank you guys so much for checking out this video. I really appreciate it and I'll see you in the next video.